Today I'm answering a question from a 25 year old man who is very worried about his 13 year old brother who is in a situation with narcissistic parents and he's asking how he can help this brother. All right, so let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in relationships and take back your life. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. If that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. But first, do you have your coffee? Today I'm using a cup that belonged to my mother-in-law who passed away several years ago. Um, when she died, my sister Piper, who is actually technically Bill's sister, my husband's sister, gave me several of mom's coffee cups because she knew I collected them and this is one of them. Um, I don't know how old it is, but I know it says Cook's Club on the bottom. So. If anybody knows, let me know. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So let me start by reading you this question. Dear Angie Atkinson, I'm actually a subscriber on your YouTube channel. Your videos have helped me a ton on narcissists and how to deal with them. I need your advice on something that you have not covered. My story is really long and dramatic and I swear it's real. I'm not making any of it up, so I'll keep it short. My half brother and I were raised by a narcissistic mom and dad, his dad to be specific and I was disowned and went no contact two or three years ago now. I'm sorry to hear that, my friend. And I'm finally getting my life back together. However, after learning that I was emotionally, verbally, mentally, digitally, financially, and physically abused by them, I cannot help but worry for my little brother. He is 13 now. I'm almost 25. I've not been able to talk to him for the same two or three year period. I have heard from other family members that he's getting depressed. I want to get him out of that situation if possible. From my research, he's turning into a narcissist himself already, and that was when he was around eight years old. These people are so bad that I tried to kill myself three times in one year under their care, all at about 17. The fourth attempt was after they disowned me, and I would have succeeded if I hadn't stopped myself. If I'm no longer suicidal, I'm no longer suicidal, but I refuse to watch as my brother, the former golden, golden child, is now possibly the new scapegoat, previously me. I have already told 311, who told the emergency police my area, and the protocol invest and by protocol investigated him at his house. But otherwise, I'm stumped. What do I do? I've gone to everyone else. They either can't help or don't believe me. I just need your advice. My brother means everything to me. Please let me know what you think of the situation as soon as possible. If I left anything out, blah, blah, blah. If you end up using my story, that's fine. I only ask that my last name not be given and my brother be called Adam instead of his real name. That way he'll still know it's from me without actually calling him out. Is that okay? Thank you for your time. Sincerely, Axel. Yes, that is okay. All right, let's talk about Adam, shall we? Axel, this is a tough situation because you've said that you've called 311 already. For those who don't know, 311 is a hotline service in the United States uh, that is a non-emergency phone number people can call in certain cities to find information about services, make complaints, or report problems. It is generally realized as, you know, recognized as a non-emergency number, okay? The first thing we have to discuss is, is the types of abuse that your brother might be dealing with. So. There are generally three different types of abusers, as you probably know, and we kind of made it seem like maybe he was dealing with a lot of those. The first type is the type who is very obvious and out there. Uh, everybody can see their anger and, and their violence. The second type is those who are triggered by things like alcohol or drugs. And the third type is people whose anger are aus isolated and, and um, out of character in other people's eyes, leaving the rage toward children and people closest to them, which I think is what your parents are doing, if I understand correctly. Since narcissists are all about self-preservation, part of the preservation is the reputation. So I'm guessing in the case of your parents, they're hiding it well outside the home. Is that right? Narcissists are very concerned about how people outside of their closest people feel about them. Uh, they, they care how people perceive them. People inside the home is a whole other story, as you know. Um, the true deception, in my opinion, is who they are and what they do when no one's watching, as you've, you've expressed in your letter to me. I think the bottom line is, for narcissists, it's all about control. So, if you're unable to help him get out of the home at 13, which I understand, uh, you might teach him how to be in control of what he can and how to only deal with what he can control. If he's being physically abused, 
you know, I would, I would reach out to CPS, Child Protective Services, um, because they can help if he admits to it or if they find evidence of it. If they're using it as a way to control and intimidate him, you know, if they're being violent, children who suffer abuse are in a constant state of terror. They come home to abusers who don't love them in the way that children deserve to be loved. They don't have the emotional maturity to, to cope or self-heal in many cases because no one teaches them how to take care of themselves. And I'm guessing you experienced some of that in the past. One of the things is, regardless of what the reason is, domestic violence or any kind of physical violence is not acceptable. Child abuse, not acceptable. The, the fact that the person is a narcissist is not relevant to this conversation because if the child is being physically abused, they need to be pulled out of the home. So you contact the authorities, you work on restraining orders, things like that. If, if you're in a position that you can help your brother by giving him a place to live, that might be something you might want to report to the courts as well. Know that if you get the courts involved, you've, you have a chance of your brother going into a foster home and you never seeing him. So be aware of that. So if you are familiar with the family system as it works typically for a narcissist, uh, you already know that there's usually a scapegoat child involved uh, and then a golden child. And in some cases, there's a forgotten child, you know, often the middle child. The scapegoat is the person who's blamed for everything that goes wrong in the family. The scapegoat um, is the problem. The scapegoat is the person that all the negative emotions are dumped on. The golden child, on the other hand, is exalted and has all kinds of attention and praise. And in either case, each role is assigned by the parents and sometimes even goes back and forth. Um, I can think of one situation off the top of my head right now where a, a mother, and not my mother, this is somebody that's not me, <laughs> uh, has two daughters and one daughter is raised, you know, to be the golden child, the other daughter is raised to be the scapegoat, but occasionally the roles flip. And so it's very interesting. But anyway, uh, both are projections of the narcissistic parents. So false identities that are, you know, assigned to the children. And of course, the children, unfortunately, they, they, they just try to do their best to cast those roles. Do you see what I'm saying? So while the golden child tends to function as the pride and joy and the, you know, the, the one who's, you know, the one in the family, their successes are celebrated. Their success, their, their failures are just pushed aside. No big deal. Uh, while in some cases, the narcissist, parent will actually twist things around and make it the scapegoat, the scapegoat child's fault that the golden child got in trouble. It is easy to see how a scapegoat is harmed in this way. It's easy to see that to certain degrees, uh, whether openly or otherwise, the scapegoat child is, is all, always systematically blamed, systematically shrunken, belittled, um, abused, shamed carries a, a significant amount of personal responsibility for the fact that the narcissist hates him or herself, the parent, uh, has a frustrating job, whatever. It is harder to see the damage that's done to the golden child. I'm guessing your, your brother may be the golden child here. Based on what you told me, I'm guessing you were the scapegoat child. And sometimes the scapegoat child is replaced by the golden child when the scapegoat child leaves, but not usually. In this case, I would hope it's not quite as bad for your brother because being the golden child, while there are definite problems with it um, isn't quite as painful as it is to be the scapegoat child. But the golden child can end up being very engulfed, very surrounded, suffocated by the narcissistic mother. Uh, and the golden child's life ends up, they tend to be very enmeshed with the narcissistic parent. Uh, so they are more likely to remain the puppet more longer. The best thing you can do is try to reach out to him in any way that you can. I know you said you haven't talked to him in three years, but if you can just try to stay connected to him by, you know, through text or email or Facebook or whatever, um, and just try to be there for him, that's the very best thing you can do. If you've already tried to involve the authorities and it hasn't worked, just be there for him, validate him, and do the best you can to connect with him. I don't know that you're going to be able to get him out of there if you've already tried to contact the police and CPS, um, but if he feels like he's being abused, he could also go to his counselors at school and things like that. So something to think about. So number one, the first thing you have to do is to remember how dangerous a narcissist can actually be. 
don't underestimate the narcissist and, and their capabilities. I'm sure you already know this. Too often, people confuse narcissism and ordinary behavior that's bad <laughs> or someone else with an inflated ego. So a true narcissist, remember this, a true narcissist is cruel beyond what regular people can comprehend. It causes emotional, as you know, and physical even damage. Even if they're not physically abusing you, emotional abuse causes physical problems for us. Um, we've, we've talked about that before. You don't want to underestimate how, you know, and I'm sure you're not because you're in the middle of it, right? How conniving your parents can be and how, how difficult they can be. Now, I, I didn't get what, you know, how they were abusing, but I did, I did hear you say that physical abuse was involved. So something that you can do for your brother is to make sure that he understands it's not his fault that he's being abused. You want to stay connected to him as much as you can. Let him know that you're there and that when he's old enough, you can be there to help him, things like that. I don't know if your parents are letting you be in touch with him or if they've completely cut him off as well. So this is another thing. You don't want to withdraw your support though. Even if you can only support him from afar, you want to make sure that you offer him as much support as you, as you can during that time. You want to make sure that you understand that he's going to be a little different while he's dealing with the people because, and the fact is, you know, what happens generally with, with children of narcissists is that they either come out a narcissist or they come out an empath. It's pretty much an either or situation. Not always, but pretty often. And that's depending on how they, how they turn the love. And what I mean by that is how they, you know, the love that they should be expressing or normally would be expressing to the parents. Where's that going? If they're expressing it to other people in their lives, you know, because the parents aren't accepting it, well, then they can become an empath. But you said he had certain narcissistic, certain narcissistic tendencies at age eight, which kids can grow out of. I mean, children by nature are self-centered until two, usually, and they start to develop empathy around then in most cases. But if they're never taught empathy, they don't always learn it. But as you know, the longer a person's involved with a narcissist, the more damage that's done to the self-esteem. Uh, the victim has been abused on a very deep level, a very soul level. It doesn't heal quickly, sometimes never. It's probably even very hard for him to, to describe what he's going through at this age. I have a 13 year old son right now, and I know that he is far more emotionally mature than I expected him to be. So your brother, depending on who he is, I, I would need to know him to understand specifically what advice to give you. I would need to know more about him personally. But I can tell you that with my son, who's 13, he's pretty good at expressing himself. I think if you can be there for your brother, if you could text him every day and check on him and things like that, that would be really helpful. Remember that he may have a little PTSD uh, and so that could affect the way he's behaving. Maybe offer to try to get him some help with that. Here are some things you can do specifically for him. Anytime he tells you about abuse, you can document it write it down. If, if he has physical uh, uh, bruises or, or abuse marks, things that can prove the abuse, have him send you a picture on his phone, text you a picture. That could help you in your case if you're actually trying to have him removed from the home. So document. If he tells you of any other mistreatment, any abuse, anything like that, write it down. It's best if he doesn't keep the records himself, you know, have him send you pictures on the phone if he can, because if there is a court situation, you will need proof, he will need proof, and you can keep it so he doesn't get in trouble for keeping it himself. So some things can happen with you as his brother. For him, he may become severely hurt. He might be traumatized or affected um, in ways that you don't understand, but I'm sure you do understand because you, you were there a few years before him. You understand as his brother, he may be turned against you by your narcissistic parents. He may not even want your help. I'm not sure what, what your situation is there. You understand that he has been programmed or might be programmed into being a narcissist and that is a concern. You, you have obviously awful fears about this and I totally get that. And of course, he is in a daily relationship with, an, with two narcissists is what you said to me. If he is severely hurt, traumatized or anything else, it is important that you understand that all you can do is try to do your best and try to help. If you're concerned about him being programmed into being a narcissist, you're in a really hard place because as his brother, you don't really have a lot of legal rights to remove him from the home. So the best you can do is be there for your brother, document the stuff that he tells you, write it down in a notebook, keep it somewhere safe. If he sends you pictures, put them on, you know, in it, print them out or, or something and put them somewhere safe or put them on a, you know, backup on the cloud or whatever and be available to help. You, you said you, you called 311. If there is for sure physical abuse in the situation, you have the right to call Child Protective Services. 
but do so with the knowledge that if you do that, it, it needs to be in with the understanding that you may not see him for a long time if he goes into Child Protective Services. I don't know how great that system is, let me just say that. I haven't really heard a lot of super positive stories, but I know that there are positive stories and positive people involved. I just personally haven't heard a lot of great stories out of there. My Even in my practice, people who have dealt with a, a narcissist taking their children from them by using CPS as a flying monkey. And I, I just, I don't want to encourage that ever. You got to understand this. You got to know your boundaries. You got to know your rights, which in this case, unfortunately, you don't have that many. You, you don't want to, you're already no contact, so good for you on that. But are you keeping contact with your brother? Uh, you have to stop expecting the narcissist to be human beings and cooperate like normal people. They just aren't going to. Don't threaten anyone about taking action with third parties. If you're going to call CPS or you're going to do, just do what you're going to do. I would let your brother know in advance if, if you think that that's a possibility. Bottom line, my friend Axel, you only have the power to change yourself. You can give Adam information. You can tell him things that will help him. You can be there for him and listen to him when he needs someone to talk to. You should validate him as a person. Tell him you're so proud of him when he does something good. I would work on connecting with him via text and staying connected to him until he's a little bit older and then visiting with him when it's possible. I know that's not a great answer, but that's the best I got for you today. It's a very tough situation and I'm so sorry that you're dealing with it. I hope that's a little bit helpful. That's a tough one, all right. So let's talk about the question of the day. The question of the day is how would you help Axel to help Adam? What would you suggest for them? Share your thoughts in your comments below. Maybe you can help save a life today. Have a wonderful day. Keep your chin up. Know that everything's going to be okay. Have a wonderful day. As always, thanks for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It does mean a lot to me. See you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.